Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's kind of get sure. into those characters too. So Nada is played by Roddy Piper. Um, the body, rowdy one, if yes. you will. Well, of course, everybody knows him from his wrestling days. Um, right. This movie, again, he holds a world record for the longest fight scene oh since The God. Quiet Man. Yeah. Um, and they Is that modeled. current, though? Uh, I think that was up until this point. Until, like, fucking John Wick 18. Yeah. <laughs> John Wick, the whole fucking thing is a fight scene, I know, dude. right? Yeah. But that was that was it was a world record at that point. Yeah, they absolutely. wanted to actually, and that fight really does go on. Dude, but it's a real fight and scene. On, it's a real like that's <clears throat> you could see somebody really fighting that way. I disagree, now. dude. No, because really? there's some of those times when they got hit, and I'm like, that guy's done. Yeah, <laughs> he's done. Those yes. dudes, no, no, I mean, too big, is, motherfuckers. It like doesn't that. matter how big you are, dude. <laughs> when we talk about that, <laughs> if I bash your head two or three times off the, con- the asphalt, <laughs> yeah. you're probably not going to yeah. get up, and if you do, you're not going to be in any shape to take me back on. If I was the one on top of you bashing your head into yeah. the... <laughs> look, at Keith, look how... I mean, Keith David's a big dude. Oh, 100%, man. He's like yeah, a good he's three, four not inches smaller um, than Piper was. One of the only men that can pull off a pink wife beater yeah. and rock it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Well, he had a purple... He had a mauve shirt, sweatshirt, and then he had yeah. a mauve <laughs> undershirt, too. I was like, what the fuck? That's I noticed awesome. that the last Welcome time Welcome to the 80s. It. Yes. <laughs> That was a, that was just a, that was a very good scene. It was awesome. Um, but everybody knows him from Hell Comes to Frogtown. Piper, you <laughs> oh, know. I was like, at, Keith, yeah, what? Keith David. Now everybody uh, that knows about Hell Comes to yeah. Frogtown or whatever it is, and Body Slam. Body Slam was the other. Yeah, movie Body Slam. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Body Slam, pushing to the limit. Body <laughs> Slam. It was like a rock and wrestling movie. Maybe we'll have an episode where we could have a versus movie oh. where it would be Body Slam versus No Holds Barred. Yeah, Body Slam wins every time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not saying you're wrong, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying it might be a fun episode. So, it would be fun. So we, so we, so we. All right. So we got Frank. Frank Armitage was Keith David. He was in Platoon, The Thing. He was the voice of Spawn and Spawn yeah. the Animated Series. His list goes on and on because he's such he, he's Rick good. and Morty, all kinds of shit. What does he do in Rick and Morty? He's president. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh right, right, right. Keith David's voice. He was he was also on the last season of Community that was on uh, Yahoo. What did he play? He was a uh, he was just a he he kind of took over Chevy Chase's spot as the old guy in the group. Yeah, that went yeah. down well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Chevy yeah. Chase really went out with a bang. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Keith David was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We maybe one of these days we could talk about Community because it's a piece of drop culture, too. dude. It's awesome, yeah. I, oh, and it kept on having a small co- either way. Yeah, yeah. Side anyway, note. anyway, anyway. Um, and then, um, God, shit, he was in so many things. Um, Mark for Death, Dead Presidents. Yeah, yeah, it's just too many things. Keith David. I know we've talked about him before because we've talked about some movies See, that he's been in. Because the thing, that's right. So, yeah. um, if you need more information on Keith David, which you shouldn't, but if you do, because this is your first introduction to him, definitely check out our episode on the thing. Yes, he is a main character in that too. Which you know, and and that's the thing with Keith David. He is such a great actor. Yeah. There's Perfect. A, everything that he does, he really lends. He nails it. Yeah, even Platoon. Whenever he was in that, that was one of the one of the earlier films that I saw him in too, and just loved his character. You know, um, and I don't know if this is the right time to talk about. It. I saw an interview with him talking about um, this movie. Yeah, and he said at the time, um, like, because that was all filmed in a homeless mm-hmm. camp. And he had been helping the homeless, you know, doing things like that. So it really gave him some perspective to be that guy. Yeah. I was like, that's cool. And then Piper. That's acting. Yeah. And Piper acting. also was like homeless at the time too. <clears throat> or not at the time. But, not at the time. Yeah. But he left home really at 13 years old. Right. Like left as an, uh, an abusive father. And so you don't know how much that story is true where he's talking about it later on in the film. Right. Um, but yeah, he really did kind of. Get out there and make make something out of himself. Yeah. Now let's move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was deep. I can keep going. Um, Holly was uh, played by Meg, Meg Foster. Foster. The eyes on on Meg Foster. I was going to say those fucking eyes, dude. It's just I, crazy. She was, they're not like so. Obviously, you'd be like, oh man, those eyes. And it's, yeah. 
her eyes are just this fucking concerting, dude. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you can't look her in the face for very long. You're like, ah. Yeah. I know. It's just it's it's fucking that demon light eyes, blue. dude. Something, you know what I mean? Is like, it light blue? I don't. Something. They're like ice blue metallic. Oh, yeah. She sees my <laughs> deepest, yeah. darkest secrets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She sees into my soul. Well, she was oh, evil in Masters of the yeah, Universe. Yeah, she was. And, you know, um, she was on Leviathan just yeah. on the TV screen. She knows she, what to play. Yeah. She was on Blind Fury with uh, another Rutger Hauer. Rutger Hauer. Yes. Yes. Another awesome 80s dude. Um, and then, you know, you have George Buck Flowers. Yeah, um, I love the quotations on Buck. Buck. Yeah. He's so awesome. He was on Escape from New York where he was a bum in that one too. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting beaten up in the in the toilet of the fucking someplace, I think, and he's like, Oh, I got me a wristwatch or something like that. It was fucking <laughs> awesome, right? Um he was on Starman. Um Starman Escape from LA. He was on a he, him and and, and uh, um Carpenter worked a lot together too. As as Carpenter does, as we mentioned. Just like with uh Peter Jason too. Mm. Peter Jason, this was one of the four movies that he worked with him in a row, I think. It was wow. something like that. I think he started with um Prince of Darkness, which check the archives. And then also and that was right before this, right? What? I hear it. Yeah, I know. I, I hear it too. I don't I don't mean to do it, but something's hit. Uh <laughs> yeah, no, he uh he started with uh that movie right there, then he did this one, and then he also did one more with him too. Um but he was also on I didn't know this, he was on Nice Dreams, the Chi Jin Chong movie. Really? And um God, um he he's such a weird character too. I mean, he, his character roles are pretty much the same. Yeah, you know, but it's he's a he's a good actor. I think uh, I really good can't character kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, was in that movie actor. Dreamscape too. Yeah, with uh, what's his name? What's his nuts? Max von Sydow. <laughs> That's not who you thought <laughs> no. I was going to say, right? No, not at yeah. all. Dennis Quaid. Ah, uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Raymond Saint Jacques. He was on Airwolf and Starman. He was a preacher. So yeah. as far as like um actors and things like that, besides the stunt man um that did pretty much all of the aliens. Um the guy that Yeah, the one that um choreographed the fight between um Rowdy Roddy Piper and mm-hmm. uh Yeah, he played Keith most David. of the aliens. Yeah, he um, played yeah, good yeah. portion of them. Yeah, he would just put them on there and everything. Um, that's pretty much the cast right which, there, which kind of makes sense. Cause he's kind of a little dude. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He can kind of fit into any, anything and they, they can really kind of put him on everything. And Al the young was in this movie too, just for a bit. Yeah. And just for like a small bit. And I'll, I'll tell okay. you when, when we get there. Cool. Ooh, uh, anticipation. Yeah, I know. Anticipation. Ooh. You know, the stuntman of all stuntmen. Yes. Was actually in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a bit real. It was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> so, Let's get started with this movie. Um, the movie opens up with that really cool score that John Carpenter did because he did the music for it too. Yeah, him and someone else. Yeah, and they actually, um, they, that, from what I read too, that scene cost so much money to get that train to go by at the right time, but then somebody fucked up and oh, they really? had to do it again. So it cost him even more money to do it like that. <laughs> this was, um, this was his first movie with a live films, wasn't it? Carpenter's? Uh, maybe I think it was his first movie with a live film, so he had kind of fuck said fuck the studio after Big Trouble, right. everything like that, because that was eighty six, wasn't it? Yeah, he was just like fuck all of that shit because they're going to interfere with all my crap. And then he went with the live films and started. He did three movies with them, I think, and then because um, because Alive did uh, Alive Films was uh, the last one that he did with them, which we did that podcast on. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> So, in the Mouth of Madness? Yeah. yeah. I think that was the last for live films that he did, and then he went back to the studios. Um, so we get to see Nada. We don't really know much about him. We just see he's a drifter. It looks like he just got off the train or some shit like that, right? It looks like very 80s with his pants. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, and he has his uh, flannel shirt on. <laughs> nice jeans. Which I'm wearing a flannel shirt right now, yeah. but I don't feel like it's... You don't have those almost stonewashed jeans up to your that's, tits. That's the, that's the piece, right? <laughs> and he's got the work boots and the and I mean, he backpack. Just, he looks like an everyman. He yeah. looks like a day yeah. laborer. Um, which he comes across the deal. It doesn't really resemble L.A. in a way because it's overcast and yeah. raining and shit like that. You it know? was like the Great Depression, just not Chicago. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It was just kind of like you can almost infer, of course, that he's homeless. You know? Yeah. 
one hundred percent, and he just really just a drifter. Yeah, he starts walking around, getting warm, you know, and kind of going through things, and he runs into you know where they're at with the preacher and stuff like that. So right. he gets a taste of um, L.A. a little bit right. right there, and he sees the cops. And he's well, like, right yeah. before that, um, he was inside, and they were looking for a job, and that kind of sets the president of like. They did not give him two seconds. They were just like, all right, blah, 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 goo, doo, blah, no, oh, yeah. we got nothing, you know, and yeah. then kick him out pretty much. So it's, you know, kind of leading into a little bit of the story probably. Yeah. The yeah. the woman kind of, she's um, not empathetic at all. So no. it's no. <laughs> she is not. Well, and it shows, it shows what that system is like for people. You mm-hmm. know what I yeah. mean? It's really, that's the, a little social reflection, especially of that time. You're dealing with Reaganomics board. and yes. all that. Yeah. Job board was huge. The dude with the wheelchair is like shaking his head like, no. You know, and, I mean, and we should probably preface this. I mean, John Carpenter commonly refers to this as his middle finger to Ronald Reagan. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. So just so we're all on the same page. Yeah, because right Reaganomics wasn't working. Yeah, the, people were yeah. decline. It was a huge. Decline. It was failing the bottom half. Mm-hmm. I learned to spell with Reaganomics. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and then also too, if you look at what's going Reaganomics on, Reaganomics right worked for me. Yeah, yeah. They, I it mean, can work for you. <laughs> our, our, our current elected official up at the very top is doing the exact same thing again. You know, Trumponomics um, <laughs> work for me. Yeah, not me. working. He for gave anyone. me a gun. I now I don't have to spell. <laughs> I don't got to. I already had a gun. Um, I already had a gun, and uh, <laughs> I can still spell. But you know they're gonna take it away. God damn it! No, they're not. <laughs> so yeah, you get to see that whole part where it's just like those people are like. <sighs> she's like he's like well you know where was your last place of employment he says something like denver colorado yeah he's like 14 banks closed in one week or one month or yeah. something like that so one month yeah so it's like a you know it's it's been a big travesty but he he said he'd worked there for almost 10 years or something eight like years that. something like that yeah yeah. yeah yeah almost 10 years working there maybe it was almost 10 years. maybe he was a laborer too i don't know he did some sort of construction, probably. Yeah, because he was a big beefy dude. Yeah, <laughs> beefy dude and had his tools in his bag. I yeah, mean, yeah. He, that's what you did when you were, you know, a construction yeah. worker, carpenter, or anything like Before that. Before we go too far, too, I forgot to mention when you mentioned the preacher. Like every good, like good movie that's like going to be like suspense horror kind of thing usually has a preacher just a going street, at it, a street yeah. preacher. Yeah, yeah, just going to town. Like, well, I mean, Dawn of the Dead had the preacher that came out at the very bottom. He's like, please let me pass, senores. <laughs> please let me pass. The people of 105 will do what you wish. <laughs> I have given them their last rights. And that was like, that added a lot to that Dawn of the Dead movie. Yep. Yeah, because he only had one leg. When the dead walk, senores, we intense. must stop the killing. Or lose the war. <laughs> I want to watch your version of this. <laughs> I could do all of it. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> That's the movie. I That's going to be another time. podcast where we just recreate actual Dawn of the Dead movies, <laughs> but we'll just do all the voices. <laughs> Shit, man, this is better than I got. <laughs> I got a lot of them. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I mean, he he does find his way into the city, and he goes to the construction site at this point too, right. because he's because now it's sunny outside, which is crazy. <laughs> You know, it was all like overcast and yeah. kind of gloomy when he comes in and then it's sunny and he goes to the dude and he's like, well, this is a union job. And he's like, can I please talk talk to the shop steward? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then you get to meet Frank. It, so let me, let me stop you there. So he says it's a union job and then the camera veers to a bunch of Mexican guys. Yeah. Doing nothing. <laughs> Just standing. Playing like hacky sack. And that's when he says, well, can I speak to the shop steward? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. So it was kind of weird. That was just a weird scene to me. Yeah, it was was really weird. Well, it's reflection. You know, we're still reflecting on social things at the time. I blame the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's funny because it was almost like he threw that line out there to say, well, it's a union job. And he's like, damn, later. (laughs) Well, he (laughs) almost like changed his tune as well. He was like, blah, blah, blah. You got a job. And he's like, no, this is a union job. And he's like. Could I talk to you, Stuart? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, and you know, throughout this whole movie, um, Piper does kind of, I mean, he's not an actor for life, you know. I mean, oh, that's not no, what his no, entire deal was, even though he's MMO, a wrestling yeah. actor, you know. Exactly, that's different. And I think he does a really good job in this movie mm-hmm. because he's not over the top. It's not something you expected from a Roddy Piper. You know? No, I, I will say this. The, the one critique I would have is, you can tell. I mean, the delivery of some lines, you're like, <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, brother. Yeah. But maybe, you know, maybe it's hard to direct a guy that could smash you. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, you know, Carpenter is a big fan of wrestling. Right, right. And saw him at WrestleMania 3. And Vince McMahon apparently got really pissed that he was going to do this movie. And, and he told Piper, well, I'll get you a movie in like two months. You know, and he was like, nah, whatever. And he quit and went, moved to Hollywood. And, you know, he's, he's with, you know, pretty good actors in this movie. Right. There's not really anybody that's like really, really bad no. at all. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody is just really good in this movie. 